about it. Uh, Lewis, good afternoon. How are you, friend? Are you? In, uh, I mean, are you like a bronze god after all your time in Florida now? I don't know. If I was, you wouldn't see it because I'm in like sweats, sweatpants. I'm wearing a winter hat around the house. I'm cold. <laughs> and I like you. Uh, welcome back to winter. So, Lou, yeah. Lou, yeah. I'm, gl- I'm glad you had a good trip. Welcome back. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you. Oh, it sounds like you're being <laughs> set up. <laughs> so, Lou, I see that, uh, I see, you know, hey, John Lester uh, showed up down at Fenway South. And, uh, you know, he's, yep. he's uh, like a guest uh, instructor. I'll call it that. And yeah. I kind of chuckled a little bit because uh, he's in full uniform. And yeah. I wonder if I showed up and, you know, I was a guest instructor. I was a guest coach for, like, Gerard Mayo. And I literally <laughs> showed up in my old uniform <laughs> and, like, started coaching like baseball players do. How do you think that would be received? It's a different sport, though. I mean, like, the coaches, the, the manager wears a uniform. Last right. I checked, I never seen Bill with pads on the sidelines. So, you, know, you, I would expect you to be dressed like a coach. You would have your little, you know, probably knowing you, your extremely tight shorts, a uh, tank top underneath, like a Patriots kind of, you know, T-shirt that says "Coach" on it. <laughs> so you would dress like a coach. So he's dressing like a coach. Andrew Bailey, the pitching coach, is out there in full uni. It just feels weird, does it not? I know it's a different sport, but I, I think I would just, if I'm John Lester, I think I say no thank you. I'd just rather be in normal clothes. <laughs> you can't be out there in slacks and khakis. No. I can't wait for Joe right. Mazzulla to throw in a Celtics jersey and shorts and then go out there and try to coach the Celtics. Can't wait no, for know, that. Well, that's the thing. In baseball, we call those people front office. The guy oh. that's in khakis and a oh. socks polo. So it's a way of you differentiating know? between the two, right? Yeah. And then when you yeah. see those guys coming around, nobody, everybody stops talking? Correct. Okay. Correct. All right. That's when everybody kind of tightens up a little bit and just nods and says, hey, hey, how's it going? <laughs> Small talk. Fake, oh, yeah, it's fake not, questions. No, it's not even that. You have to speak in full sentences. They're Yale educated. Hello, sir. How are you this fine morning? You know, you can't just be like, yo, what's up, dog? <laughs> None of that going on. Hell, hey, exactly. hey, hey, Lou, it's really funny that Fourier's mind went there with John Lester because where, sure. my, where my mind went was, oh, it's nice to see the guy back in a Red Sox uniform that was the first player who really got effed with over money by this management group. That's the first thing that I thought of is what John Lester represents. And then is David Price going to come walking through that door? Ah, it just, it brought me back to 10 years ago and yet the aggravation of today. Yeah. Yeah. First off, I've you know, really never been surprised of where for his mind goes. <laughs> sure. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. That's, yeah. But yeah, it was, it was sort of like, yeah, you know, you were the first guy to get screwed, you know, but then uh, afterwards they actually gave your money to David Price and, and kind of here we are, right? Like, so I know he gave company lines to the media for the most part. So, um, yeah, but it was good to see him, but I like to see him 20 years ago on the mound throwing bullpen for the Red Sox. There you go. I, I'm with you. Lou Maloney is with us. I know you got eyes on this team. I know there are certain yeah. people that uh, you were impressed by, but I did see a tweet, and I, I think I was listening a little bit the other day, and I heard a lot of talk about Raphael Devers, how he looks at the dish. He, he you know, he he's he's not loving maybe being the franchise player from the uh, you know the non baseball standpoint, but it sounded like he looked pretty good. When you got eyes on Devers, what yeah. did you see? Yeah, he made a real adjustment. Um, you know, we're so accustomed to his batting stance. Like, my son does his batting stance. It's annoying, you know, because he's like, yeah, he just got his hands way up here, his leg over here. And I was always like, well, maybe that's why he's not catching up with heaters up. You know, I always joked about it. But he, uh, his hands are lower, and they're a little bit tighter to his body. They're kind of like maybe ear height. They're not, like, over his head to start. Now, a lot of guys, it's like, you can start wherever you want. But when it gets time to hit, everybody, everybody is in the same hitting position with the hands kind of loaded, maybe around the shoulder area and back. So what he did was he kind of eliminated some movement. So they're a little bit tighter to his ear, a little bit lower about helmet height. So now when he kind of gets into his swing, his hands get into the hitting position quicker. And because of that, you know, I think he's going to be able to see the ball better, see the ball a little bit longer. He's already drawn two or three walks, which is big for him. 
but he's really focusing on hitting the ball the other way. Um, so that's really more an approach thing. But I think the adjustment with his hands, and Connor Wong is doing something similar as well, just to try to get more contact. But the results so far for, for Devers are pretty good. It's Again, it's a week. It's a week into it. I mean, I'll tell you this. If they sucked, we'd be talking about it. But they're actually been pretty good. You know, the pitching's been pretty good. Uh, the hitting's been pretty good. So nothing is guaranteed by it, but it actually was a really good week. For them. So, so, Lou, um, Tristan Casas was on this morning with the Greg Hill Show, and it was really good to hear him talk. I mean, guy's got personality. He seems like um, like an odd savant. Like he just like he's like he's yeah. like a like a like a you know an old soul in a way when it comes to baseball. When I when I hear about what he does, what he does at first base when guys come on, like how he preps, painting his nails, all that stuff. He also mentioned um, how he was going to be able to help Rafael Devers become a, a better fielder and. You know, because we all know he can hit. And I was like, well, what was he talking about? Like, how was he going to help Devers be a better fielder? I have no idea. Would it have something um, to do with, like, the that fact means... that if he throws it over his head, he'll grab it? <laughs> no, maybe maybe it's just him working defensively, you know. And, and as a first baseman, well, if you could pick two or three errors and take them off the table, you know what I mean, and make two or three, four picks over there for me through the course of a year, that can really make a difference for any kind of infielder. So, um, That's what I think I, it I must have been. Tristan Casas. You know what I mean? At first, it was sort of like, okay, what are we doing? You know, first day in the big league, shirt off, yoga in the outfield, just shorts on, kind of different, you know, his routine and everything. But he's a, he's, he's a fascinating guy. I enjoy talking to him. He's got a plan. Um, he knows what he's doing. I think he made adjustments last year. But for him, his biggest thing is, is defense. You know, his biggest thing for him, and maybe that's what he's talking about. He can help him out with a pick or two. Yeah. And, just be better around the bag, but it's it's really like like a pre pitch thing that he needs to work on, like getting movement, positive movement towards the batter. So when the ball is hit, he can kind of go laterally, left and right. Because I think he's been he was caught flat footed. It got better as the year went on, but that's an area where he can really improve and kind of take another level here defensively. Lou, I know Good that. Uh, Lou, I know our guy Coop, uh, who uh, runs our Twitch during the Gresham Fourier program, is a part of the uh, Play Tessie podcast crew. Uh, And they asked the question that really now that you got eyes on the ground or had them down there, uh, will Sedan Raffaella be the Red Sox opening day center fielder? Boy, they're really giving him every opportunity to take it. Um you know, even today, like Duran in left field, which is probably his best position defensively, but they they um, they really want to see him kind of take the job. I know people that have had him in the past in the minor leagues absolutely love him. Small, small sample size last year. We know what it is. He chases a lot. He swings a lot. Um, but he also hits the ball hard a lot, you know, or at least hits the ball a lot. Soft contact because he does chase it. But um, th- th- I have a hard time believing that he and Duran are on the team in opening day together. You know, so I don't, I don't know what that means, you know, because I know Tyler O'Neill is a gold glove left fielder. They like to leave him out there. Durant can't play right. So it would be Durant in left and Rafael in right and center, and then you'd be platooning or O'Neill in, in, in the outfield and right field with a Brayu. You still got Ref Schneider. You still got Yoshida. It's like you, you, don't, you can't carry six outfielders. If you do the math, it just won't work on the roster. You can't do it. It's like when you start counting how many wide receivers you can possibly keep, right? You just you can't keep six. So are they are they waiting? And this is just like I said, my opinion, but are they waiting for Rafaela to show them that he can handle it? That they are confident that he will go out there and play Gold Glove defense and be a game changer. And once they are, is that when they pull a trigger on a trade? You know, whether it's like Duran, right? I mean, I know San Diego is still very interested in them. So are they waiting to make sure that they're all in on 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 Rafaela? Um, before they do something, because they can't keep six. Maybe it's a guy like Ref Schneider. I don't know, gets moved, but I just don't see that happening. So that outfield is going to be interesting to see kind of how that thing develops. I still think ultimately, you know, if Duran's in center field, O'Neill's in left, Abreu's in right, Yoshida and Ref Schneider, that's your outfield. You, the, the inevitable is going to happen. Someone's going to get hurt. And if Rafaela starts to get in AAA to kind of almost like an extended spring training, treat it that way in Worcester, and just be ready to go and come up. Duran was up here, what, 10 days into the season last year? Mm-hmm. Like, it's going to happen. So, Lou, uh, you mentioned Yoshida a couple times, but I feel like I haven't really heard his name mentioned too much as opposed to last year, obviously, when he was brand new. But um, yeah. 
I know he had like a minor surgery, right? But what's he look like when you were there? Does he look any different, look any better? Especially, you know, we know we can do at the plate defensively. Like, how's he look uh, out in the outfield? I mean, I think, he's, I think he's the same. I think he is what he is, you know, defensively especially. I think the biggest change for him is just going to be the adjustment to Major League Baseball playing in America. Will he be better with the time zones? Like, will he not be as lost? And he's not, you know, can he hit the ball in the air more? You know, I mean, he had some of the worst ground ball numbers, like ground ball rate, like fourth worst in baseball. And you don't want to hit the ball on the ground because with him, it's just lazy ground balls to first and third. So it's really more about him getting the ball in the air and hopefully, you know, like in the off season, you know, no WBC to prep for, kind of no unknown of what America's going to be like and the changing of the time zones and playing, you know, not having every Monday off and never taking a flight anywhere or change the time zone. That is where the big adjustment hopefully comes in for Yoshida. Just get used to playing Major League Baseball for six months and flying and traveling and, and doing it all physically. That's the biggest adjustment for him. Lou, is there a a dark horse, a guy that no one's talking about that you sort of identified and were like, this guy's probably going to make the roster? Is there anybody like that that caught your eye that we should all be keeping an eye on over the next three weeks or so? You know, I, I think there's some intriguing arms, but nobody really kind of, you know, like in, in the bullpen, that competition. Uh, as far as let's go, there's some backup catching concerns and obviously what happens in center. But so there's really nothing there that sort of like catches your eye. Mm -hmm. I think the one thing that catches your eye, because I've had two games of his so far, is Roman Anthony. Like nineteen years old, like the dude is a just a savage. Like he should not be doing what he's doing. He should not look the way he looks physically. Just control of, of an at bat. Like Devers got Devers got fifty eight games in the big leagues at the age of twenty. And and I I was thinking of the two of them, and I'm like, well, Devers probably obviously got more time at Double A AA or Triple A, and he didn't. You know, it was almost like this year of Roman Anthony is kind of the beginning of the year that we actually saw 58 games from Rafi Devers in the big leagues. So, you know, I wouldn't put anything past anybody. You know, I, I don't want to put limitations on anyone, but he's different. He's a dude. And I would not be shocked at all if he's in the big leagues this year and he's playing, you know, one of the outfield positions for this team. I just think that he's mature, physically strong. Um, it's really nothing, to, uh, you know, he's got, you know, going against him. That's probably the one that's the biggest surprise is how comfortable he's looked at a big league game twice. Our guy Lou Maloney is with us. He's with us each and every Friday at noon, breaking down the Red Sox. Lou, thanks a bunch. Stay warm. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. We'll talk right. soon. Later, right. bud. There we go. There goes our guy uh, Lou Maloney with us on the Harbor One Hotline.